Good morning. My name is Tim Murtaugh, and I am the substitute pastor while our pastor, Patty, is on sabbatical. Thank you for the welcome and for inviting me to be a part of this congregation for the next three months. I am glad to be here. The theme of our worship service this morning is welcome, and so everyone is welcome to the worship service here at First Congregational Church. Announcements. I am a bit remiss, but I wanted to give a big thank you to um, portions of the, the, well, the whole memorial committee and especially Bev Brower, Jane Gary, John and Connie Marshall. They worked their tails off just about two weeks ago now getting the memorial garden in pretty shape. And I meant to say something last week and I forgot. Um, it was like the hottest day of the year to the, to the um, that point, I think, and they blame John for picking the date, but then I noticed that I think he did most of the shoveling, so there may have been some correlation between those two things. Anyway, thank you so much for all your work out there. I am also passing along some reminders on behalf of Beth. Um, please, please, one room Sunday school is in effect and there are opportunities for volunteers to pick up a week. So the sign up is uh, on the bulletin board. Please feel free to do so. This month, our big Sunday drive is for condiments. So the bring in groceries for the month of July is condiments. Please feel free to dump them in the cart. And then the Father Fred Back to School Shoe Event is at the end of this month, July 31st, the very last Monday. We are still collecting socks, any sizes from 2T all the way up to adult for males and females, as well as looking for volunteers. If you would like to help in the kitchen that day making sandwiches and prepping prepping bagged lunches. There is a sign-up sheet for that. That's just a brief stint in the morning. But we will also gladly accept volunteers throughout any part of the day that you're available to help. So basically any time from 8 to 5, um, set up, tear down, and all the things in between. We just can't have too many hands that day. So even if you just have an hour to spare, we would love to have your help. Thank you. Here's an announcement over here. Well, since she mentioned that, I just read in the paper today something that astounded me. They have a, a like a blessing bus going around, and there was a mother with a little girl, and she was given two apples. That child had never had an apple. And she was so thrilled to have an apple that she said, can I hold the other one in my hand? And this really touched my heart. I don't think that we realize. I know we have blessings in a backpack. But some children would rather stay in school all summer just because they get meals. And, and we've got to pray for these people and find ways to help people. It, it, just, it just touched my heart very much. Good morning, everybody. So um, I want to remind you that the walkathon is coming for um, Bensi Senior Resources. We usually have a team um, that uh, goes and, and does the walk, and we uh, raise some money for, for them. These guys are uh, amazing, and they help a lot of people in our community. So um, if you want to join our team, and uh, we usually bike the because <laughs> it's easier <laughs> but um, um, you know if you want to walk with us or bike with us and or uh, donate uh, please see us um, that I think I believe let me check the walkathon is actually in uh, August 5th it's a Saturday it's actually it's very early uh, it starts at 7 30 they usually have breakfast there and you can go um, do your walk first and then eat or whatever order you want. But <laughs> we don't have to be there at the same time either. If you don't want to get up that early and do it that early, uh, you can just uh, go there later. But um, yeah, just see me. Um, 
we usually tie-dye shirts too for the kids and um, I would encourage um, the parents of all our kids at, at church to, to um, talk with me so we can uh, coordinate something so we can uh, get the, the shirts or the kids going and, and uh, our team put together again. Yet no pressure, but I want to piggyback on what Carolina said because our team from two or three years ago, we are actually the poster children for Benzie Senior Resources Flyer this year. So I think they're coming at us with high expectations. I don't speak and I don't like microphones. So um, this coming weekend is Bear Lake Days and I'm involved in that. And if you'd like to see me sweat at a pump organ, I will be <laughs> playing that at noon on Saturday at the Bear Lake Museum. Come out and join us. We have a lot of crafts and um, I think you'll have a fun time. Thank you. And is that it for joys and concerns as well? I would like to pass along a prayer request for Jim Sheets, if we can please keep him in our thoughts. If there's nothing else, we will begin our worship service with our prelude. Join me in the call to worship. O oh, sing to God a song of joy, for we have been greeted by our God. Dance for God a waltz of welcome, for we have been embraced by our God. O oh, create for God a portrait of hope, for we have been inspired for our God. Please join and stand as you are able to sing the song, The God of Abraham Prays, on page 14 in the Red Hymnal.
Let us join together for the prayer of transformation. Holy prophet, divine warmth, creating a home for strangers and friends, can often take extra effort. From the extra cleaning to food preparations, we spend extra time, talents, and treasures to care for your children. Sometimes we often do not feel as if we have the energy to go the extra distance to ensure the drinks are cold and our homes are cozy. Give us an extra boost in our bodies and minds and souls to be the welcome team in your realm. May we embrace divine hospitality as we care for the ones struggling the most, the ones caring for your creation, and the ones speaking prophetically to you. Amen. God's magnificent grace will refresh our hearts, inspiring us to return again. Everyone is welcome to the table. Even if you have doubts about your faith, if you are not dwelling in the comfort of great assurance, you are welcome. Even if you don't feel worthy, if your life has been such a mess that you don't think that you are inside the circle of God's love, you are welcome. And I suppose even if you just wandered in off the street wondering what was going on here, you are welcome to the gifts of the table. Because I was ordained to the Christian ministry, but I was never ordained to be a gatekeeper at the table of the Lord. And so, with great joy, we remember today that it was on the night when he was betrayed that Jesus took bread and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and he said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
And then, in like manner, taking the cup after the supper, he said, this is the new covenant sealed by my blood. Take and drink, all of you. Do this in remembrance of me. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God most high. We give you thanks, God of majesty and mercy, for calling forth the creation and raising us from dust by the breath of your being. We bless you for the beauty and bounty of the earth and for the vision of the day when sharing by all will mean scarcity for none. We remember the covenant you made with your people Israel, and we give you thanks for all our ancestors in faith. We rejoice that you call us to reconciliation with you and all people everywhere, and that you remain faithful to your covenant even when we are faithless. We rejoice that you call the entire human family to this table of sacrifice and love. We come in remembrance and celebration of the gift of Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to be the good news. Born of Mary, our sister in faith, Christ lived among us to reveal the mystery of your word, to suffer and die on the cross for us, to be raised from death on the third day, and then to live in glory. We give you thanks, eternal God, for those who have run the race of faith before us and now surrounds us like a cloud of witnesses. We thank you for those who pass the word of your love to each new generation. We thank you for martyrs and saints who give themselves in love for you and the pursuit of peace and justice. We give you thanks, infinite God, for the church around the world. We thank you that we count as your brothers and sisters in Christ, people of all races, tongues, and nations. We thank you for those who witness faithfully to you in the midst of political or economic oppression. May all your people be one. We give you thanks, living God, that here and now you give us parts to play in the great drama of your love. We bless your gracious God, you gracious God, for the presence of your Holy Spirit in the church you have gathered. With your sons and daughters of faith in all places and times, we praise you with joy. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, O God. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy One, we unite in this covenant of faith, recalling Christ's suffering and death, rejoicing in Christ's resurrection, and awaiting Christ's return in love. We spread your table with these gifts of the earth and of our labor. We present to you our very lives committed to your service in behalf of all people. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit on this bread and grape, on our gifts and on us. Strengthen your universal church that it may be the facilitator of peace and justice in the world. Restore the earth with your grace that is able to make all things new. Be present with us as we share this meal and throughout all our lives, that we may know you as the Holy One who is with Christ and the Holy Spirit, lives forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, all things are ready.
Let us pray. Together, bountiful God, we give you thanks that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first scripture for the day is from the book of Genesis, chapter 22, verses 1 through 14. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Morah, and offer him there as burnt offerings on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went down to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father, Abraham, father, he said, here I am, son, he said. The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. And from the Gospel of Matthew in the 10th chapter, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The word of God for the people of God. Welcome, 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 welcome. Six times in the space of three verses, we hear Jesus saying some version of that word. It sounds to me like an emphasis, or maybe even a mandate, that we are called to be a welcoming people, a welcoming church. In a world that is divided, where there are voices who want to separate the human family according to nationality and language and religion, we are called to be a welcoming community, a welcoming faith. And one of the things that, that impresses me so much about the First Congregational Church of Benzonia is the efforts that you have made to make this a welcoming place. First of all, there's the facility. There are no steps. Everyone, well, maybe there's one back here, but, but everyone can come into this building and be a part of this place. 
But more than that, you welcome groups from outside the congregation to the barn, to the gathering area, to the kitchen, to provide space for people who want to gather here. I remember when I was an, a brief interim minister here some seven years ago, I requested that a youth group coming up from Kentucky to do some volunteer work for, for Benzie Senior Resources requested that they be allowed to sleep here in the building. No problem. Immediately, they said, they're welcome to come. Sleep on the floor in the Sunday school uh, classes, m take showers at the barn, use the kitchen. It was a sign of a welcoming congregation. We are called to welcome, welcome, welcome. But sometimes being a, a welcoming person is difficult. For me, I find it hard because sometimes the fear boils up inside of me. Afraid that being welcoming might get me out of my comfort zone. It might put me in an awkward position. It might even be dangerous. Even in spite of that, Jesus calls us to be welcome. And then there are the times when my efforts toward welcome, being welcoming, go unnoticed or even rejected. Like the time when I was serving a church that had a, a vacant lot right next to it. I don't know who owned the lot, we didn't. But one summer day, a, a man came and put a huge tent on that lot, put up some folding chairs, set up his sound system and lights, and for two weeks, every night, held evangelistic services. I never attended the services, but I couldn't help but notice as I looked out my window that during the day, this man and his wife were simply sitting under the tent, talking to each other or reading. So I decided to be neighborly, walked in down there, introduced myself and told him that if you want to get out of the heat, come on over. If you want to use the restroom or the kitchen, you're welcome. No, thank you. We're fine right here. <laughs> now he was polite. But the message I got is, we want nothing to do with you, go away. Sometimes our efforts get rejected. And then again, sometimes our best efforts don't even get recognized. And sometimes we don't even know the best things we do in this, in this life, sometimes we're not even aware of. Like the time when I, I called a woman in the church, she was the chair of the Christian Ed Committee, I wanted to talk to her about a, com a meeting coming up, but her husband answered the phone, and before I could even ask for her, he said that she was out of town visiting her mother. She'd be back the next day. So we chatted about 15 minutes, and that was it. I thought nothing more about it. Until about a week later, we were both at a meeting, and this man went on and on about this call that I made to him. He said he was very distressed, very down, depressed about life. He didn't know where to turn. He was very upset when suddenly the phone rang and I called at exactly the right time and my call perked him up, turned him around and put him in the, in the proper life's path. He thanked me for making that call to him. I didn't have the heart to tell him I was really calling for his wife and not for him. But isn't that the way it is sometimes? that our best efforts, we don't even know about it. So it doesn't take much, Jesus said, to be a welcoming person. It can be as little as a cup of cold water given to a child. A little bit makes a big difference. I got arrested once. It happened when I was uh, living in Iowa. It was a hot summer day. And I was doing one of my least favorite household chores. I was cleaning the blinds in a sunroom. They got all dusty and dirty. They're hard to clean. Blinds are hard to clean. So I took them off the windows and spread them out in the driveway. And there I was in my bathing suit, a t-shirt and flip-flops and a bucket of soapy water and a sponge, scrubbing down the, the slats, then hosing them off, turning them over and scrubbing the other side. when. A police car pulled up in the driveway. A man got out and said, you are under arrest. What? <laughs> yes, he said. <clears throat> According to the Muscular Dystrophy Association, you have committed a crime. What? <laughs> yes, he said. You are not a fan 
of the University of Iowa Hawkeyes or a fan of the Iowa State University Cyclones, you are a fan of the Michigan Wolverines. Therefore, your bail has been set at $100 worth of pledges to the Muscular Dystrophy Association. Well, I'm a good sport. So leaving the blinds right there in the driveway, I got in the car. He took me downtown to the courthouse square. They had set up a jail out there by the sidewalk so everybody who walked by or drove by could see. They put a black and white striped shirt on me and a black and white striped cap put me in the jail and took a Polaroid picture of me holding the bars. Then they gave me a phone and a phone book and said, call everybody you know and get pledges worth $100 and we'll let you out. Well, the first person I saw was a friend of mine walking by. He was a lawyer going into the courthouse. I said, Paul, Paul, I need your help. I need to raise $100 for bail for the muscular dystrophy. Can you help me out? And he said, it's against the law for a lawyer to post bail for a client. I said, I'm not your client, I'm your friend. But he kept on walking. And then I called one of my best friends, another pastor, and I said, I need help. I need a pledge to muscular dystrophy. Can you help me? He said, I'm about to have lunch with another group of pastors, and I'll see what I can do. Call me back in 10 minutes. OK. Called him back in 10 minutes. OK, how'd you do? Can you help me? And he said, well, we prayed for you. You prayed for me? Jesus said I was in prison and you prayed for me? That's the way my day went. Well, after about an hour, they took pity on me, let me out, took my shirt and my cap, gave me the Polaroid picture and a piece of, a slice of pizza and somebody took me home. Well, it was all in fun and it was a good cause. But I couldn't help but notice that when I was there, I, I felt a little bit of a sense of desperation and almost even panic and how nice it would have been if somebody could have just come by and said a nice word to me, been friendly to me. I think that's why Jesus didn't say, I was in prison and you prayed for me, but rather, I was in prison and you visited me. It doesn't take much. Now, the, the big political issue about welcoming, of course, is the issue of immigration. There are voices in our society that want to end immigration, close the borders. We don't want those people in here. But the Bible, especially the Old Testament, again and again reminds us to be friendly to the strangers in our midst, to welcome those who are foreigners living in our country, remembering that we too were once immigrants here. I'm a, I'm a fourth generation Irish immigrant on my father's side. My great grandparents came here in the 1870s. They were poor and I suspect they were illiterate. And in many ways they were unwanted and rejected. But somehow they made it. And I think it was probably because somewhere along the line somebody said, welcome, welcome, welcome. And so First Congregational Church of Benzonia with open arms, open heart, and open doors, may we be a welcoming congregation, a welcoming church. Amen. Let us stand now for our hymn, which is printed in your bulletin.
please be seated. And now let us join our hearts as we pause for a moment of prayer. Hear our prayers, O oh God, on this day when we worship, when we long to feel your presence and your guidance for our living. Fill us with your love and keep us in your care as we offer to you our songs, our prayers, and our offerings. We bring before you ourselves, full of energy sometimes, sometimes not, sometimes exuberant with generosity, sometimes not. So when we find ourselves depleted and weary, conscious of only the ways we have been hurt or wounded, when we count up the reasons for our misery, we complain, when complaint piles on complaint, remind us of uh, the many ways our lives have been truly blessed. For you have provided for us and given us the tools and resources to live a life of joy and contentment. Thank you, God, for the life and for all that makes life worth living. Today we pray that we might truly become a welcoming people in a world that wants people to divide themselves up into units of like-minded families filled with suspicions and prejudices against others. Make us hospitable to all, even as we have been welcomed. May we welcome others into our midst and into our hearts. We pray for this church family, especially during this time when our pastor is on sabbatical. We pray for her nurture and growth and pray for the church during this time for nurture and growth as well. We pray for the welfare of all who have been abused and neglected, for the children of hunger, hungry and, hung, hunger and poverty, for those who lack education and medical care. Make us mindful of the great needs around us and give us the will to respond. We pray for our nation and our nation's leaders, for the peace of the world, especially where there is warfare and violence, destruction and death. We pray for peace in our homes, in our schools and in our church, for peace in every human heart as we pledge ourselves to following Jesus in the way of peace. As we remember Jesus, we remember the words he taught us, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, even if you place your offering in the tray out in the back, or if you push the button on the website, or if you mail in a check or hand deliver it to the office, we receive this morning's offering. Thanks be to God. to care for our neighbors, from the children who are thirsty, to the prophets and other caregivers who need a place to rest. May these gifts of treasures, talents, and time be useful to ensure all have been what they need. Amen.
Christ be with you and also with you. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. Now may God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us. May God grant us peace until we meet again. Amen. Amen. Lord has made that the Lord has made. We will rejoice. This is the day that the Lord has made. The Lord has made.